Right now on a special holiday edition of Denver 7, a former hospital patient is giving back to kids like him. So I'm like, Mom, can I do a toy drive? And, mom, and my mom's just like, yeah, sure. An army of volunteers makes magic happen for local Make-A-Wish kids. For one day, you know, all their troubles are gone and they're happy. Plus, helping old St. Nick with his postage. I send Santa Claus letters out, you know, to make the kids happy, to give them a boost. And what better of a gift this holiday than a house to a homeless family in need? It means the whole world to me. Like, this is exactly what I needed for my family. You're watching the Denver 7 Feel Good for the Holidays special. And happy holidays. I'm Jason Grenauer from Denver 7. Well, we know that sometimes you want to watch the news, you want to smile, you want to laugh at what you see, you want to have your heart warmed by something inspirational. Well, I do too. And so for the next little while, I wanted to share with you some stories that will hopefully do just that from this past holiday season. And so it's the season of giving and for the little ones, it's probably the season of gift getting. But I found a little boy in Littleton who's combining the two. He has other children on his Christmas list this year. Like most eight year olds, Adrian here is excited for Christmas. It's good. But for him, that excitement hasn't been there in a while. When he was six, he was diagnosed with a rare blood disorder called aplastic anemia. Your blood cells and your immune system fight against your bone marrow. So if it does that, you have no bone marrow. Adrian spent two months in the hospital and needed a bone marrow transplant. From the day he was diagnosed to when he was released after transplant, 181 days inpatient. I couldn't do anything. Mine is just sit in my bed and play. While he was there, volunteers would deliver donated gifts, little things to bring a little bit of joy to such a difficult time. Toys, Lego sets, Hot Wheels. This Christmas will be different. Essentially, he's a totally healthy, normal little boy right now. And while he has a small Christmas list of his own, that's not all he wanted. Yeah, so I'm like, Mom, can I do a toy drive? And, mom, and my mom's just like, yeah, sure. He wants the kids who are in the hospital this holiday to have all of the fun he was able to have. Donation boxes at his school and his grandma's church started filling up and turned into all this. Where, where's all this going? This is all going to Children's Hospital Colorado. Already past their goal and still collecting to be delivered to the same floor Adrian spent his holidays. It's an it's inc incredible feeling that he would do this for other kids because he knows what it feels like. It makes me feel really happy and it means a lot to me that other kids can get toys too. And when we're talking about gifts, the smallest ones can brighten someone's day, but the biggest ones can change their lives. This next story is about a family with small children and a need, and another family that responded in a big way in Greeley. In a quiet neighborhood, on a quiet street, sits a quiet house. Well, maybe not that quiet. <laughs> But the emphasis here is on house. We were living on a partially converted school bus. Just last week, Olivia and her family of five. My children are five, one, and one month. Their bus broke down in Greeley. They were stuck and homeless. It's scary. So on Thanksgiving, we made a bunch of plates of food to take down to some homeless people. That's when Virginia Kinch's family met Olivia's. We were concerned with the weather being what it was, them living on the bus. We drove back down and asked them if they wanted to move into our other house. I just didn't think it was real. I thought it was like a cruel joke almost, because who does that? Nobody does that. A week of gathering donations of food and clothes to give to the family. And this house became a new family's home, rent and utility free. It's helped restore my faith in humanity and hopefulness. Olivia tells me that I'm an angel or a saint and that I saved their life. And their holiday too. We didn't think we were gonna have a Christmas at all. We would have been lucky if we had enough food or if we got jobs at that point. Instead tonight, one, two. This family is home for the holidays. People just need somebody to care. 
Now, anytime we're talking about little ones, like in that last story, it really is all about the excitement of the night before Christmas, that anxious energy. And parents, you know how much work it is getting ready, getting everything set for Santa Claus to come, make little wishes come true. Well, I happen to know a similar group of people doing something similar right here in Colorado. They're known as the Make-A-Wish Foundation like the big preparation before the big reveal on Christmas morning. Hanging the decorations. Perfect. Pulling those gifts out of hiding. Happy holidays. I feel like one of Santa's elves. But it's not for one or two kids. Hundreds of children, preparing for hundreds of children all at once. This is the 31st annual Wish Store put on by Make-A-Wish Colorado here at Children's Hospital. A lot of them are immune compromised and they can't really go to the mall. A small army of volunteers spent the night. That's perfect. Getting every detail right. And knowing where it's going and knowing that the, tomorrow when the kids come, they're gonna there's smiles on their faces. And the next day, here is the result. More than 400 Wish Kids went shopping at Children's Hospital free of charge. For one day, you know, all their troubles are gone and they're happy and they're here and they're shopping. Each little one had their own shopping helper as they picked out gifts for their whole family and something special for themselves. Santa Claus was there, of course. All in all, nearly 4,000 gifts were given out and even more smiles. Now, speaking of delivering happiness, every year, bunches of kids like Charlotte here will write letters to Santa Claus. There you go. But how often does he write back? Well, it turns out more than you think. When you talk about someone who brings happiness and joy, Santa ranks pretty high on that list. That means so does Tom Bosson. I portrayed uh, Mr. Claus, Chris Kringle. For a local shopping center in the early 70s, but wanted to do more. I uh, got dressed up one day and and headed for a hospital. He'd visit five hospitals a year and did it for several years. The expressions on the faces when Santa walks through the door and ho oh, oh, ho oh. Eventually, he hung up his red coat, but still wanted to help spread that kind of joy. And I send Santa Claus letters out. Let's just say he helps old St. Nick with his postage. Nobody sees me when I make my trip with my sack full of goodies held tight in my grip. The names of the good girls and boys I've listed, and your name is there, I just couldn't have missed it. Just, you know, to make the kids happy, to give them a boost. He will admit he's not the real Kris Kringle. I'm better looking than he is. Maybe not necessarily Santa Claus, but his number one helper. And still helping, despite facing the biggest challenge of his life. I've got Parkinson's. Needing pills to stop his shaking. It's just a terrible thing to have. Yet he still prints and mails those letters just to friends and family with no plans to stop. Someday I, it, it may if I, I should live so long, you know. I love kids and, and, and you know, whatever I can do, to, if I can do anything to make them smile and make them happy for even for a short bit of time. The holidays can be an inspiring time as Tom just showed us not letting his disease stop him from bringing joy to kids this season. And neither did our next story. One of the biggest movies at the box office this holiday season is a film called Wonder about a boy with a rare syndrome called Treacher Collins and everything he has to do to live a quote normal life. But as I found out just a few short weeks ago in Denver, that plot line isn't just for the silver screen. bustle of downtown Denver. Stop and listen. As they say, never judge a book by its cover. My name is Michael Casey. I have a Treacher Collins syndrome. For the most part, it's just your face did not fully develop with the rest of your body. At the age of 17, he's already had over 30 surgeries. Whether it was to hear, to breathe, or to see. Through physical pain, past bullying at school. I'm deaf for a reason, just turn off my hearing aids. Still just as smart as any other kid. There's no mental deficit uh, that you can notice by looking at someone. Michael plays five different instruments. He speaks five different languages. Now he comes to Denver or Boulder with his dog. He's my cuteness factor of my whole act. <laughs> and he plays. Bringing smiles, smiles to people's faces uh, is my main objective. And that's what normally happens when they stop and listen. There's different perspectives in normal, but the way I see normal to me was just 
having a smile on my face. Still to come, 5280 is a big number here in Denver. That's how many of these are going out to those in need this holiday. Plus, so you want to find love? Apparently, you just got to come to DIA. I put it to the test, and the only way to do that, me approaching women at the airport. So, you come here often? Hi. Long flight? Is that Candy Crush? Have you ever met anybody at an airport before? That's next on the Denver 7 Feel Good for the Holidays special. Welcome back to the Denver 7 Feel Good for the Holidays special. That's not Jason Grenauer. I'm Jason Grenauer. And wouldn't it be so nice, so romantic to take one of these horse-drawn carriage rides up and down the 16th Street Mall, spend it with that special someone? But if you're looking for that someone this holiday season, it's not a romantic place like this. It turns out love is in the air at the airport. <sighs> so it's the holidays. It'd be nice to have somebody to spend it with. I wonder. Like here. A lot of people travel alone, and a lot of people sit at the bar and drink waiting for their flight. Definitely, I would say that this is a great place to do that if you're a single guy and whatnot. You sit around for a long time, I'm going to be here for four hours before my flight, so I guess it makes sense. Now this isn't totally scientific, but between the total number of people here, about a million this weekend alone, the fact that people are in a good mood traveling for the holidays, and the number of interactions from the ticket counter to security and at the gate, and that's a recipe for love. It's a big airport, so I guess it makes sense. Now that ranking was done by Match.com. They rank the airports based on the number of missed connections. Now we're not talking about missed flights here. Instead, the number of times single people using their app were in the same place, but simply missed each other. I mean, a lot of people sometimes here, this and that. I travel for business a lot. You're more approachable because like there's more single people traveling, I guess. Especially over the breaks and everything, when everyone's really doing all of their travel and whatnot. Well, there's only one way to find out. So who are we waiting for? Hi, long flight. You have any fun new apps on that or anything like that? How's the flight in? Ooh, airports, am I right? Oh, hello, is this your boyfriend? Hi, how are you? Baggage takes forever, am I right? Is that Snapchat? Not having it. Have you ever met anybody at an airport before? So do I write my name? Yeah, you can write you can okay. write whatever you want. At DIA with a phone number. I'm Jason Brennan. Denver 7. Now I do want to tell you, everyone in that story played along. It was all in good fun. I do have an unfortunate update to pass along though. The number that I got at the airport, I think it was a fake. Moving on though, I know, right? Now I love Christmas, but I can't be the one to have all of the fun. And recently a friend of mine and colleague, Amanda Del Castillo, got to do a story about a very dedicated group of volunteers that are basically delivering the 12 days of Christmas. And in the basket are 17 pieces of fruit, five pieces of candy, uh, a, a Christmas card that is a holiday card. All of this, minus the partridge in a pear tree. So we haven't run out of candy. In 1987, two baskets went to a pair of women who suffered a great financial loss. They lived in a community that quickly took to the produce. Everybody else there started gathering around and taking a piece of the fruit and looking through the cards. That's when Denny Gray, Dan Sutton, and Woody Page had the bright idea. And with a group of community partners and volunteers, the Basket of Joy project took off. We thought we'd try to do 100 and then 200 and then 300. And at that point, we knew we had a little bit bigger project than we had initially planned. But the plan was always to surprise seniors with something they didn't suspect. I'm 96. The people that get baskets don't have anyone else at Christmas. And after three decades of Christmases. Very, uh, it's emotional. Denny and Dan are ramping up and retiring. No, it's time. It's time to turn this over to other people. 18. People who have come out in the thousands to deliver a true basket of joy. You know, it's more than just the three of us that started it. It's a huge community thing that people need. So um, I'd certainly like to see that continue. In Denver, I'm Amanda Del Castillo, Denver 7.
And when we're talking about stories that really tug at the heartstrings, it really doesn't take a whole lot to make someone's holiday. As Denver 7's Jackie Correa shows us, it can start with the smallest of kind acts, like returning a lost wallet. We picked up some ornaments and some lights for the tree that we have outside. Jim Sharper is Santa today, loading up his sled with gifts and a tree for a family who needs it. And more importantly, deserves a thank you. I got halfway across town and received a phone call from this angel that said that she had my wallet. He heard that this angel, the restaurant worker who found his wallet, had been going through a rough time, something Jim knows well. I was once homeless 10 years ago, and I know what it is to struggle, and this is my way of paying it forward. He enlisted his nonprofit, Feeding Denver's Hungry, to surprise Lucretia at her home. Merry Christmas! <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for getting my wallet to be here. It's a little something for you. Thank you. Um, in the back of the truck, we have a Christmas tree and decorations, about 10 presents for your son. Um, I'm paying for a spa day for you and daycare for your son while you go enjoy it. And I'm also going to take you shopping and fill your refrigerator and your pantry full of food. All for doing the right thing. Thank yeah. you. The only one, it was a Christmas thing. You got a Christmas <laughs> You got it, girl. Lucretia doesn't consider herself an angel. Returning Jim's lost wallet was a no-brainer. I think I just was doing the right thing. What everybody should do. And now the favor has been returned in the Christmas spirit. He's not used to having presents. Now you have one. Oh, that is safe. <laughs> I'm blessed because I wake up every morning. I'm blessed because of him, but I've never been, never been given anything. I'm glad we could help you out a little bit. Jackie Crea, Denver 7. Still to come, it's a Christmas for all in Castle Rock. We'll take you there. Plus, everybody come out quick, look at the light! Colorado's Christmas movie past. It's bigger than you think. Bingo. That's next on the Denver 7 Feel Good for the Holidays special. to the Denver 7 Feel Good for the Holidays special. I'm Jason Grenauer. Now, so far tonight, all the stories that you've seen and heard have come with a reporter's voice as an accompaniment, if you will. But every once in a while, we like to just take a step back and let the story tell itself. That's the case in this next holiday piece by Denver 7 photojournalist, Eric Goody. We drove up here so that she could get that experience. I see you got your next one. She was diagnosed with sensory processing disorder. She doesn't have to smile. <laughs> so this will be our first year knowing that she has something different. They've never seen someone really like him before, probably. Look down here, look at this. He was fantastic. What's in here with me? You've been doing work in school? You know, they're thinking about not only my, my you know, quote unquote normal children, but also my, my daughter, you know, who has special needs. Can I sit on the floor with you? My favorite part was that Santa got down on the floor with my kids to make them feel comfortable. That was different and special for sure. I just thought it was neat. You don't have to stand in the lines at the malls and it's quieter, it's not as intense. It's okay, he just made them, I think, feel very safe and comfortable and you Santa a hug? waited for them to come to him. I just think more awareness needs to be brought to what it is and be sensitive to other parents because you don't know what they go through. Thank you, Santa. You're welcome, Thank you, Santa. guys. Merry Christmas. Ah, the bright lights of Christmas. Kind of reminds me of the bright lights of Hollywood. Maybe? No? Well, as our anchor Shannon Ogden recently taught me and is about to teach you, some of your favorite holiday movies may just have Colorado as the backdrop. 
It's called the Hollywood of the Rockies. By no one. Still, picturesque Colorado has seen a few holiday films shot here. Some you know, some for very good reason you don't. Zeus is coming to the rescue. Like the Mario Lopez Paris Hilton TV movie, The Dog Who Saved Christmas. Why don't you do something else? Or the 1978 feature Stubby Pringles Christmas starring... It doesn't matter, nobody ever saw it. Friendly, folksy town. John Denver started one called The Christmas Gift. Georgetown. It's set in Georgetown, which in the movie is the Christmassiest town in the world. Everyone I've met believes in Santa Claus. Christmas vacation. Now, there is one holiday movie filmed in Colorado that you do know. In fact, it might be your favorite. Dad goes with boughs of holly. It gave us one of the most famous Christmas families in the most famously Christmas decorated home. Oh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. While the Griswold family home was on a Warner Brothers lot, most of the rest of the movie was shot in Breckenridge. Made a pretty good time. Ann Lucas, who provided these photos, was a camera assistant on the film. We reached her at her home in Breckenridge. We shot it late March of 89. Breckenridge was chosen in part because of all the snow that would be there in March. Not that March. The cast and crew were there and ready to go, and no snow. So they had to truck some into town. We were literally bringing snow from the top of the mountain down. Ten truckloads of snow. And once they got it all spread out just right, a five-day blizzard hit. We got 87 inches in five days. It actually snowed so hard at one point that we couldn't film outside. So many of our favorite scenes were filmed here in Summit County. Around this egg timer. The opening sequence with a logging truck is Highway 9, just north of Silverthorne. Let her rip, hang pen. The sledding scene is peak eight in the ski area. Audrey's frozen from the waist down. Oh, that's all part of the experience, honey. When Clark drags the family through the snow to find the perfect Christmas tree. There it is. Pretty much like the Highway 9 and Tiger Road area. And it's now like a, a subdivision called the Highlands. But at that time, there weren't any homes. What about the kids? The Walmart Clark and Cousin Eddie shop in is the Walmart in Frisco. Really nice. And there's one scene you'd never guess was filmed in Colorado. And it was also shot in Frisco. The scene where he's in the attic looking at old home movies. That's actually the gymnasium floor of the middle school. Dad, that thing wouldn't fit in our yard. Not going in our yard, Russ. It's going in our living room. In addition to the snow, Christmas Vacation also brought truckloads of money to town, one and a half million dollars, and employed locals as extras and crew members during the three weeks of shooting. I did it. Breck even gets the movie's very last credit. But no, overall, it's like every, Randy Quaid, everybody, it was just, you know, it was a lot of fun. Everybody had a good time. Did you bring a saw? If another movie is never shot in Colorado, our place in Hollywood history is secure from this one alone. Well, I hope that you've smiled, that you've laughed, that if you did have to cry, they were happy tears. From our Denver 7 family to yours, have a happy, safe, and feel-good holiday. Until next year, I'm Jason Grenauer. Thanks for watching the Denver 7 Feel Good for the Holidays special.